Chair recognizes the gentleman from Kansas, Mr. Mann, for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today in fierce opposition to President Biden's proposed budget. When he released his budget just a few weeks ago, nearly three months later than any president in a transition year, by the way, President Biden reminded Americans of advice his father gave him years ago. Don't tell me what you value, Biden's father told him. Show me your budget and I will tell you what you value. If that's true, then Biden's $6 trillion budget reveals to us exactly what President Biden values. Destroying America's oil and gas industry. Prioritizing the rights of illegal immigrants over law-abiding Americans. Funneling foreign aid away from our longtime ally Israel. Turning a blind eye to protecting the unborn. Under the Biden budget, President Biden suggests we spend our hard-earned dollars fixing problems he created. He wants us spending $174 billion on electric cars, carports, car charging station, and other subsidies to the electric vehicle market in a full-on attempt to replace the oil and gas industry. $40 billion to retain employees who lost their jobs after he blocked the Keystone Pipeline and destroyed thousands of energy jobs. And a total of $36 billion to combat climate change, bringing back the waters of the U.S. rule and mandating that 30 percent of our privately owned land be blocked in conservation practices. President Biden's budget is a progressive Green New Deal in disguise, and America doesn't want anything to do with it. President Biden wants $2 billion to provide care for unaccompanied migrant children at our southern border after he put millions of innocent children in harm's way and encouraged immigrants to, to cross illegally. And he wants no extension of funding to complete the already nearly finished wall system or money to enforce our immigration laws at the border and instead st instated an executive order stopping construction on the very wall that keeps our country safe. President Biden wants $63.5 billion for in international fair spending, a 12 percent increase from 2022 that lacks specific defense funding for Israel, America's only democratic ally in the Middle East. His omission is clear and comes at a time when the terrorist organization Hamas launched hundreds of rockets at Israel in the last month alone and when Democrats are on the record for their anti-Semitic language and slurs. And President Biden refuses to protect our dollars from being spent on abortions or abortion services. Instead, for the first time in four decades, no such protection exists, a protection that 77 percent of Americans support, and a protection even Biden supported for years before his presidential campaign. On top of all of this, President Biden claims his budget is partly in response to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, but like the American Rescue Plan, it too fails to investigate the origins of COVID-19. Even more, the Biden administration won't commit that none of the budget requests would include funding for the research at the Wuhan lab. The economic disaster to follow from his reckless spending will cripple American families' purchasing power and leave future generations with the crushing burden of the national debt. It is time we hold President Biden accountable for a budget that would cause our federal debt to reach 117 percent of gross domestic product by 2031, the highest level since World War II, and continue the record rates of inflation we are already seeing under President Biden. I ran for Congress with the intention of creating a better world for my children, our children, one where they don't have to pay President Biden's debts and suffer the consequences of irresponsible and egregious spending. America deserves better. I yield back.